Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Liebherr World Table Tennis Championships 2017, coming to you live from Dusseldorf, Germany. I'm your commentator, Adam Bobro, and commentating with me is Scotland's own Gavin Rumgay. How you feeling, Gavin? Yeah, superb. The adrenaline was, was really up in that last match, with, with Timo giving us such an exciting match to watch. Absolutely, a sporting event that will not be rivaled anytime soon. Actually, I hope it'll be rivaled very soon as table tennis keeps improving and as the fire burns and the lightsabers spin from the light crew, Lee Song Su and Vladimir Samsonov walk in side by side. What a beautiful image, Gavin. So these two, it's going to be a fascinating clash of styles. Vladi, one of the other most popular players in the world, just alongside Timo Bull, one of two players in Europe who for over a decade and close to two now, and in Vladi's case, over two decades, has been one of the top European players. Lee Song Su has been labeled the giant slayer and for quite a good reason, he sent a probably about, I don't know, a thousand fans into the worst tears you've seen. If you thought Kasumi Ishikawa crying after becoming world champion was something, floods out of Chinese Jongjika fans. Just amazing. Remember, these are fans who bought 150 seats in the arena two days in a row to put a billboard over that had Zhang Jika's name with the Chinese jersey, the Chinese flag symbol on it. Lee Song Su is the man responsible for sending Zhang Jika home. And he's got Kim Tak Su in his corner, who we might recognize from rubbing his hair and giving him a big hug. Some of the biggest smiles we've seen in this tournament so far. Samsonov has been playing most of the World Tour events without a coach in his corner, keeping his nostrils and air passages clear there. So after a strong match from Marcos Freitas, but a much stronger performance from Timo Boll, we have a Portuguese umpire. Now these two, Lee Song Su, labeled the Giant Slayer, partially because he slays giants, probably 100% actually. But he was one of the last players in the world outside of China to beat Ma Long. In 2012, he did it at the Korea Open. The crowd was electric, but I will say the crowd here is, if that was electric, this is atomic. I mean, really, sold out the last three days of the tournament, and especially with the German player here. But Vladi feels he's sort of an honorary European to any country. I mean, having played in Germany, Speaking German fluently, being around to rival the best player in Germany for a decade and a half, and also being an incredible sportsman, just such a kind human being. He's so popular. Lee Song Su, currently world ranked number 20. He's 26 years old. He's been in the army, had to shave his head recently. There's the legend Kim Tak Su, Olympic medalist, 1992. So Lee Song Su is known for his, oh, he's another giant he slayed, Dmitry Obdrov in 2015 in Suzhou. I think it was the round of 64, but quite early on. And here's the 41-year-old, the Anomaly, world rank number 13 currently, has been in the top 10 for probably about over a year, I would guess now, before just recently dropping out. And there's Coach Vorobiev, Anare. So Vladi's game, you know, how can a player play until they're 41? Well, if you're really loose, if you know how to relax and use your body well, that definitely helps. I think it's funny, you know, I started doing yoga to try to reduce injuries, and I talked to some of the players about this. A lot of them do different stretching, and some of them do do yoga. I know Vladi's physical training is very intense, but not in a way that he's trying to bulk up, but that he's very actively putting in a lot of time to keeping his body strong so that it doesn't fatigue with age. Gavin, what's your experience as a currently playing and competing professional as far as stretching, conditioning for the body? I think when, when you're playing and you're in your teens and you're in, you're in your early 20s, you know, there's not such an appetite for stretching. You, you finish long extended practice sessions, two and a half, three hours, and, and your body feels fine. You, you bounce back at the end of the week, you play tournaments at weekends, and you can come into a practice session on a Monday morning. But from mid-twenties I sort of noticed then yes this is the time now to put in a lot of time effort you know and, and knowledge into stretching how to stretch how to get 
the best out of your own body. That, that's really important. And similarly with stretching, you know, something I've learned a little bit in yoga recently uh, after some injuries, breathing, knowing how to breathe, sounds silly because of course we're breathing, we're alive, but knowing how to breathe, even during intense moments, can really protect your body. And I believe that Vladi really knows how to breathe properly because we don't see a lot of injuries and he's playing quite an active game. He's relaxed, he's just so smooth out there. He's got an explosive cannon on both sides on the other side of the table. And that's the pace of Lee Song Su. Sometimes it goes in, sometimes I guess his consistency factor is far less than Vladi's. Vladi's an incredibly clever and experienced player. You know, I talked to another Belarusian player on the bus the other day back. Said he no longer watches videos, doesn't enjoy watching videos of himself. A lot of people have to video analyze these days. It's sort of the standard of the game. Lily Jong talking about it in her Ask a Pro Anything, which you can see on the official ITTF Facebook page. Excellent persistence and fast foot fo uh, footwork there from Lee Song Su. Much like how Yu Sung Min took the forehand from both sides of the table. We've got a shake hands player doing the same. Really crisp and clean backhand. Where you would feel though Samsonov will fare a little bit better in this match than Jang Jika did is in the wide backhand exchanges. Sometimes there Jang Jika I felt was over committing, trying to go for too many big shots. Whereas Samsonov sometimes will just caress the ball back and make sure it goes back on the table. Sometimes that's just as important as trying to play a big fancy shot. Now as far as advantages to being tall, the wide wings you definitely have the advantage on reach. And as we've seen throughout this tournament, the forehand flip over the table. As long as you know how to keep your balance, you really can cover the table well, get a little bit more leverage with that wingspan. So as far as head-to-head -head goes, got some good news here. By good news, I mean valuable statistics for you. Vladi said yesterday that they're one and one. Lee Song Su and him, the last time they played was at the World Cup last year, and Lee Song Su won. No! The wingspan and some footwork tested as well. That Skylob goes out of frame for a while. What a bounce and what patience from Lee Song Su. Let's see this again. Turns his back to the table. And then that whipping backhand almost gets it back on the table. Had to loosen up the racket on that forehand just to reach the ball. You remember that serve, that fast serve into the backhand corner worked really well against Jang Jika in the closing stages. Yeah, I'd say Lee Song Su is a relatively fearless player. He's very bold and he goes big. Speaking of big, ball over the table, he's so fast. You know, the first time I think I saw him play, I just remember thinking, wow, this guy's got explosive power. And then he came out and maybe lost a match to someone way lower than him later on in the world tour. So he's quite unpredictable. But this tournament, I mean, here he is. Last 16 men, and even less now as we've knocked out a few in the round of 16. There's that forehand flip again. It's interesting, Lee Song Su will step around the corner for a backhand sometimes which might make him a little bit slower to get to the wide forehand, but he also has a very strong opening backhand. I guess it's sort of a percentages game. Most players, even with strong backhands, would prefer the forehand to finish a point. Or at least trust that their forehand will finish the point more likely. Don't forget, you can send in your questions at ITTF World on all the social media and hashtag AskTheCommentator. Happy to take your questions. You know, from a service placement standpoint, Vladi's so good, he'll move all around the table, move into the center a little bit. We even see him serve sometimes from the forehand with the pendulum serve. Right off the back edge there. Yeah. I played against uh, Samsonov at the 
the Spanish World Tour a couple of years ago and I was amazed at how much spinnier and how much more deceptive those serves look. You know, it's a very legal service. Look, the free arm away from the body as he serves. Massive amount of, of spin on those serves, though. Well, that shot didn't catch the top of the table at all. It was very close. And impressively, Lee Song Su caught the ball with his racket. Didn't appear to be a single bounce. That's touch, that's feeling. Nice play there from Vladi. Say so no, the hand was up, no problem. Now we've seen this from time to time, Wes, so I know when Vladi played against uh, Pak Sin Hyuk from North Korea, he got into some counter loop exchanges, a little bit soft in the first game. And then after that, he really turned up the heat. I think we're gonna have to see that here against Lee Song Soo. Oh, so close to a beautiful bending backhand on the table wide. Samsonov's just got to be careful though that almost every receive he's had so far, he's opted for the short touch. Lee Sang Su serving little side and topspin serves the majority of the time. Just like to see sometimes a little flick out wide to the Lee Sang Su forehand. Long kicking serve, not even contacted. It's a wicked bounce there. See how clever that was as well. It was right into the middle of the table. So many players, when they serve long, they serve long to either corner. That's actually easier for your opponent to just, without thinking, hit the ball. Oh, nice. Burned again. Bravo, Vladi. Inside out forehand picks his spot. You know, we talk about the elephant because of the shape of the ball, the way it curves. But elephant trunks seem like they have about 40 elbows. And I feel like, well, Vladi's arm looked a little bit stiff on that. He is so loose in general. Now, nope, there you go. It was loose, drags behind, the elbow moves in first. And the last part to come across, the wrist, just leaves it open a bit and hits it behind him. Oh, that was a solid long push. Lee Song Su wasn't turning the corner though, and he was quick to move wide to the forehand. If there's any element of surprise on that receive, Vladi wins that point. Samsonov was clever there. Just unlucky. Lee Sang Su had moved early to that wide forehand. Big backhand to finish, 11 points to nine. A game that was very closely contested to start off this best of seven match. We'll be back for game two to see what happens between the Belarusian Evergreen and the Giant Slayer. Stay right here. Players are back for game number two. Once again, Gavin and I having brilliant conversation between the games in private. So we'll make them public for you. Gavin, you were saying about Vladi? Yeah, I'd just like to see him being a little bit more proactive. You watch him in the practice hall, he's going for shots. He's perfectly capable of playing a much faster game close to the table. Sometimes he's quite happy to let the other player attack him round the table and that's fine when you're playing guys outside the top 15 or 20 in the world. You get to this top, top level, that's very difficult then. Yeah, when I think about Vladi, one of the first things, other than the blocking and fishing game and just touch, I think a lot about his receive actually. I think about his long push. Very effective in his receive, but sometimes he has to flip and he's trying out here. Don't know if that was the ideal ball. We'll see when he's on the receive. Vladi with his second serve here. But I do think the receive is going to have to change for him in this match. Long serve again, but a better reaction this time from Lee Song Su than the time before. You know, and maybe the change doesn't have to be that drastic. He lost one game 11 to 9. 
missed a few shots. I mean, he was right in there. It's not to say that something really, he doesn't need to turn over the world here. It was so crisp, the racket speed that Lee Song Soo can generate. When he's consistent, he's tough to stop because he's got so much power. It's one of the beauties of table tennis, the way he comes in for that first ball like he's catching a butterfly, like he's holding an egg, and then he just rips the next ball and just destroys it. Hey! Tough way to go to the towel. I'm sort of wondering, just thinking, you know, when you're in Vladi's situation, you have to test out Lee Song Su, try some new things. This score is quite different than game one. A long, fast serve to the backhand, short to the forehand from the backhand, middle of the table. Had the opportunity there. Tried the second of the options I gave and then just spins it up and out. It's important, though, even if Samsonov does drop this second set, that he finishes it strongly, so he has momentum for the third. A lot of players would just go ahead and lose this one 11-1 or 11-2 and give themselves no belief, confidence, momentum. He's having a lot of trouble in the received game. I mean, this is a received that troubles even the best Chinese players in the world and keeps Vladimir Samsonov close. Wow. I mean, <laughs> Lee Song Su, look at this. 10 to 1. After winning game one, 11 to 9. And an 11 to 1 victory. Lee Song Su raising up the red flags here. Samsonov's got a lot to worry about. He's going to have to find some inspiration and find some answers. Game three, we'll see if he finds them. Stay right here. see where on the table the placement has been. Samson Alves has been playing the middle of the table more, trying that. Streak continues for Lee Song Su. We were talking about the banana, how you don't see Vladi using that so much, Gavin. Yeah, especially when Lee Sang Su has been serving quite a few side spin and side spin top spin serves. You you know, some of the, the younger generation of players and even up to Timo Ball now learning that sometimes you do need to backhand flick out whether you like to play that way or not. It just keeps your opponent guessing, I feel. Yeah, I'd like to, I'll respond to that in a moment. I thought it was interesting. The second point of the game, Vladi actually gave a nice Yosa, showing a bit of fire. I think he was trying to motivate himself after the last game to, to wake up and get into it. And as far as the banana, I mean, it's one thing to come in. I feel like it's such a physically demanding shot. You have to get in over the forehand side quite often to use your backhand and then still recover for the deep backhand. So Vladi has such good wingspan, but it would be really difficult for him, I think, to get in and back to cover. So, I mean, that definitely is a young physical stroke. You know, Timo, you were saying, you see doing it as well, and I think it's, it's taxing. He plays a very high-intensity game. It's part of the reason maybe he's had the injuries he's had. If we do try to draw sort of a through line when we look at the, you know, we've got a 41-year-old out here who just played into the semifinals at the Olympic Games. His best result yet at 40 years old. If you look at Nisha Lien, who's 53, and Juanito, who's got to be around the same. Hujulun. I mean, their style of play very specific and allows them to continue playing quite well. 
So we'll see. I definitely agree, though, that in the receive game, there needs to be a little bit more aggression from Vladi because in the pushing game, whether it's long or short, Lee Song Su has just been too strong. Vladi having a world record for World Tour titles on ITTF's World Tour. Last time he was here at the World Championships, except it was in Suzhou in 2015, he was beaten by Zhang Jiku. And Zhang Jiku had been dropped out of this tournament as Lee Song Su took him down yesterday. As far as physical condition and what's being spent out here for Vladi, this is his only match of the day. So it should be a little bit less draining. I just think that Lee Song Su is playing too well right now. I, I don't know how much of it has to do with Vladi being tired in any way. She seems to be a little bit off, and that could be an illusion because of Lee Song Su. And, and Vladi yesterday had a very comfortable 4 0 win against Giannis in defense. So yeah, right. his body should still be fresh. He should have recovered, you know, not too badly. But the touch game, I don't know, the receives, I mean, this is, it's tough to say. I mean, you're talking to a player who's, who's beaten Waldner, who's, you know, been top of the world pretty much. And uh, even recently has had some huge defeats, is just really struggling right now. Nice backhand, that's the attack. I know you were saying Vladi can definitely attack with more aggressive shots from him. Lee Song Su again, just not really letting the rally develop. For example, 11 to 3, Lee Song Su. Man, talk about army training. He is dominating right now and looking like an authority figure out here. We'll see what happens in game four. Vladi time or Lee Song Su finishes. Game four coming up after this. So game four, the stadium wondering if Vladi is going to come out here or not. And he sure does with the opening point, a strong backhand attack. But just in case you were curious, for reference, other than Zhang Jiko, four games to one, Lee Sung Su, the round of four, beat Cho Sung Min, up and coming Korean player, four game to one, four games to one. And before that, Darko Jorgic, Slovenia. I see some real frustration here. I think Lee Sung Su understands that he has to keep up his performance because Vladi is one, a legend, and two, an excellent player. And if there's some momentum and confidence coming back, it can become a real struggle. Ooh! Fishing game. Good reaction time on the wide blocks. How many times we see this, though? Players racing into a two or three set lead. And then just relaxing a little bit. Nice attack from Vladi to change the pace. I just got a clever smile and smirk from Gavin as right after saying that relaxing situation as Vladi continues his fourth point in a row to start off the game. Even though that shot misses, this is the Vladi that we know we can see out here, that we expected to see in game two. And better that, okay, he's not going to take on backhand flicks, but a nice little forehand flat flick into the middle, looking to do a little bit more on the Lee Sang Su service. That's the power a little bit on the middle. Now, Vladi, being a taller player, does have the wingspan to reach the wide corners of the table a bit easier. And while that was a forehand, he was backing up and maybe looking to be reaching even more. I guess that's a funny way to say it while he's backing off the table. But in general, there's going to be a bit more success on Vladi playing to the forehand side of the elbow because the backhand is the more efficient 
shot for him to cover the middle, and he has such a big middle. Oh, edge ball in the counter. Good rally there, but it freezes up Samsonov and takes a wicked hop to the side. What we've seen though, first seven points of this set. Samsonov taking away the short play. Let's just get into long, fast exchanges and see what happens. Beautiful shot to the short side. Earning that wide third ball to the forehand. Vladimir Samsonov has been playing the World Championships for quite some time. We have records back to 1993 of the players who've beaten him. Excellent counter off a very spinny ball from Lee Song Su. There you have the placement of where the serves have been. And flicking, flicking these serves out might result in you directly losing one point, but it's better that than playing short, short and losing every point. So as we were seeing where the bounces were on the table, Samsonov stepped into a 7-3 lead that Lee Song Su got a first point out of. Now, as far as taking it easy, I don't think Vladi was very happy with his decision to try and take a second soft shot. Play one soft, and sometimes playing two, I mean, again, hindsight is 20-20. If he makes that second ball, could have been the one that won the point for him because it was such an unusual pattern. More typically, if someone plays a soft ball, they follow up, quickly change the rhythm. We'll see Lee Song Su has two serves here to tie it up after being down 3-7. Really clean stepping around that corner. It's interesting when we think, yeah, we've got the time out here, side of Samsonov. When I start to think about who would have the better chance of beating the top players in the world if they make it to the next round and then some, the history that Vladi has versus the wild card factor of the Giant Slayer. I mean, Lee Sung Su has what it takes, I think to beat number one and number two in the world. The question is, could he do it twice in a row? I mean, in 2003, Schlager getting through some of the best players in the world to face Juse Hyuk in the final. You know, so Wang Li Qin, do you remember all the players he beat to get there, or some of the top Chinese players? It was Kong, Kong Ling Hui, wasn't it? Kong Ling Hui, and who else? Ian Marshall would know this. I'm sure we'll get this shortly in our Skype chat here. Wow. 2015, Lee Song Su was beaten by Tong Pung. We haven't seen quite as much of recently. I remember he was dealing with some injury at the Olympic qualification tournament last year. And Hong Kong saw him fall to some injury. So back from the timeout, still a one point lead for Vladi. This is three in a row for Lee Song Su. And this time the change of pace works, keeps it on the table. Big point for Vladi. Looks like he's been listening to us. He's looked up at the commentary box. Most likely. Seems extremely likely. That's a good idea. Play it to the middle, but it's the most, let's say, high risk part of the table. From the middle to the middle is the shortest distance, so least amount of margin for error. Still a one-point lead, though, and his serve. Oh, the last ball! The last ball just missed the contact. There was so much side spin on that forehand that Lee Song-Soo hit. 76 kilometers per hour, pretty high up there. 
As soon as he started lobbing, I was thinking, wee, here we go. Look at this ball bend back. He can make that last shot. It's unfortunate the rally didn't continue. Needs to take this game. That applies to both of them, I guess, but especially Vladi. Missed contact. Good thing for Vladi. Big opportunity here to hang on to the lead. And he mistimed that because the first ball went fast. That one just slowed up a little bit. Affected his timing and rhythm. Right, beautiful change of pace. Again, the Zen Master quite comfortable with the spin. Change of pace again. I thought for a minute we would see him get into the lobbing game again. Some sort of fishing. I mean, all those highlights videos you see from the 90s, you see Vladi off the table for long, long rallies before he comes back in. But Lee Sung-Soo was so much pressure that distance that Vladi was at, it's quite uncomfortable for those forehand shots. So two serves left for Vladi. Question is, what are they going to be? Tries to keep it low for the last fishing shot, and we've got match point for Lee Song Su, the giant slayer, to add another giant to the bag. He's been lugging around in this tournament and throughout his career. From time to time, packing him up. Oh! And he does it, Lee Song Su of Korea, world rank number 20. Once again with Kim Tak Su on his feet, has knocked out the legend, Vladimir Samsonov. And that is the quickest handshake I've seen. Still a good handshake, but there's no question that Vladi is disappointed in his performance this match. The last game, one of the two best games he played. And I understand, I feel him, but the excitement of Lee Song Su, this could be the tournament of his career, and it continues. What a dream performance. Four straight games for Lee Song Su over the legend Vladimir Samsonov, Gavin. I thought he did really well there because sometimes when you have a big win in the previous round, as it was against Chang Jika, so suddenly you can come to the next match and just feel a little bit sluggish. Maybe you've not slept so well thinking about that big win. So to follow it up, two big wins in a row, he's looking good for the next round. Yeah, it's funny, the, type of, the types of things that keep you up at night sometimes, typically more the tough losses than those amazing wins. You think maybe he'd sleep amazingly well dreaming about his match from Chang Ji Kuh. Just, yeah, what a great way to sleep. But who knows, sometimes the excitement and the adrenaline does keep you up all night. I know for sure that when I get excited about something, it's tough to go to bed. Either way, Lee Song Su looking in quality form here, moving on to the quarterfinals quarter over a very worthy and difficult opponent. So we'll see what happens in the tur as the tournament thins out and the competition thickens. It's been an incredible day here. And you can see that it's been a long one as people have already found their way out of the stadium to come back tomorrow for the sold out show. Here are the stats on screen for the match summary. A 28 minute best of seven match for Lee Song Su. Well, we hope you've enjoyed it and we look forward to having you back tomorrow. You've been watching the Lee Bear World Table Tennis Championships in 2017 live from Dusseldorf. I'm Adam Bobro with Gavin Rumgay, and we'll see you tomorrow.